for me, I did feel like medicine was a great intersection between science and humanity. Um, I was one of those kids who was not strictly a scientist and not strictly a, you know, a literary poet type either. I sort of dwelled somewhere in between. And so medicine seemed to sort of combine the best of the arts and the sciences for me. I studied biology and chemistry um, and, was, and, and, and tried to get minors in English and philosophy, but you can only cram so many classes into four years before you completely ruin your GPA. And then, um, and then yeah, gra graduate school in biomedical engineering. I, d I did think I was going to stick with science and be a scientist, and uh, that didn't quite speak to me completely either. I think most med schools today do a pretty good job of giving their students a ton of patient interaction such that going in to see my first patient today was not something new. It wasn't earth shattering. Even though I, I now, it was my first time in a room with the degree, you know, as, as a doctor, but it still felt a lot like my last few days as a medical student going into a patient's room. So in a lot of ways that hadn't changed. Um, The, cons the consequences are probably a lot graver. I mean, you, you do bear a lot more responsibility, but I think, uh, especially in these early weeks, the less you tend to dwell on that, maybe the, <laughs> the easier it is to get through. Uh, we, did, we did suit up for the guy with the restless legs. He had an had a antibiotic-resistant infection that we were trying not to spread around the hospital. And uh, his basic story was that uh, he had had... He basically was on a lot of medicines, and in addition to that, also had a, an infection. And so sometimes the body's immune response in conjunction with being on multiple medicines to begin with can cause what we call in medicine delirium. It, you know, it's not the happy delirium that you have when you go to Disney World as a four-year-old, but it's like delirium like you don't know where you are in time and space. And so that's how he was brought in, in this delirious state. And it was simply, all we needed to do was figure out what his infection was and sort of dial back some of his medicines. And the very next morning, he's eating breakfast and, you know, completely back to normal. So that was sort of a, a funny change of states for him. I, th I think I'm supposed to be prepared for anything, and I'm going into tonight with the mindset that anything can happen. I, I have sort of all my worst-case scenario <laughs> code cards and booklets and all the things that sort of help you in, in, the, in the worst situations. I, th I think, you know, we can also knock on wood and pray for a relatively uneventful night that the citizens of Brockton are, you know, injury-free and devoid of illness tonight. <laughs>